What's going on everybody? It's me, Mark Robertson, and I am back in today. We are going to be continuing our Sacramento Kings Youth Invasion series. As I said before, I'm so sorry. Obviously, I had to talk about the Kyrie trade and just have been super busy with school, but now we are back at it, and you know who we're talking about, because I already told you, and it is the second of four of our new of our sophomores coming back this year, and it is Mr. Scalabissier. Before we get into that, thank you guys so much for hitting the like button. Today's like goal is 50 likes. I know you guys can hit it out of the park. Also, while you're down there hitting the like button, make sure if you're new to hit that subscribe button, followed by the notifications bell. Not only are you becoming a part of the community, if you hit the notifications bell and comment down below within the first five minutes, hashtag six man squad, hashtag six man hype, you'll be a part of my six man squad. Can't wait to see you guys all down there. Our current subscriber count is 279, so whoever that lucky 280 is, I can't wait for you to join, and everybody's lucky Everybody's lucky in this pot, because you guys are the ones who keep building up, building up, building up, building up. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive. I love reading you guys' comments. Make sure you guys comment down below. And in this video, I did it in the last video with the Kyrie trade, but I didn't tell you guys because I did it afterwards, but... I, find, I figured out how to use the poll section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a poll in here and it's gonna have the three high, low, medium, and highs ceilings for the for Scalavici Air. Make sure at the end of the video to choose which one you think is a good, seems most likely. And if you, and just choose who you guys think. If you guys say otherwise, choose the otherwise option and then comment down below who you think he could end up being. Can't wait to see you guys down there. Can't wait to see how the poll goes. Today's sub of the day is Richard Lee. Thank you so much. I know you follow me on my social medias. Always always liking all my tweets on there. And he always comments down below. Thank you so much, sir. And I'm glad to have you sub as sub of the day. So let's get right into it. Scalabi Sierra, 21 years old as of this year. He is a 6'11 power forward center. For his first year in the NBA, he played in 33 games, and most of those games came after the big DeMarcus trade because they made up they made room open for a power forward, and he got the spot. He's actually going to be <laughs> he's gonna be pretty 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 nice. But moving into it, 33 games this year. 12 of them were all starts, which is great to see. I don't know how Coach Yeager would do with having Zach Randolph on the team now, how he's going to play them. I think he's going to go ahead and let Scal start and have Zach Randolph be a backup power forward, and hopefully Harry, G Harry Giles can uh, build up under Zach Randolph. <laughs> he's played 18.5 minutes a game, which is a lot of minutes to get all of a sudden, but he played it very well. Almost 10 points a game, 8.8. .8. Shooting 53 from the field, 3.5 of 6.6 .6 attempts, which is really good for a rookie. He's definitely going to get better at that as his time progress. Hitting 37.5% of threes this year, but only shooting that on 0.1 make on 0.2 attempts. So I think we're going to see his three ball really gain. He tried to shoot a good amount of them during the summer league. He wasn't really hitting them much. He was hitting one or two, but... I, I see his three-point shot becoming a lot stronger, especially that we saw him show off his mid -ra his mid-range a lot in those games when DeMarcus left, so it'll be fun to see him do that. Moving on to his free throws, he shoots a good 70 clip. Hopefully that goes just straight up. I hope I hope that as he becomes a better shooter, he will become a better three free throw shooter, which it's most likely what's supposed to happen. Moving into rebounds, exact he averaged I got approximately five rebounds. It was point. It was four point nine, but we'll get right. Let's get into how many for each category. So, O boards. He had almost two O boards. One point six O boards, and then defensive boards almost four. I really do think he's going to become more of the, that nine to ten rebound guy when he actually has regular minutes. Moving on to assists, 0.8 assists a game. I really see his passing going up too. He just has to work on trying to hit more. When he gets in the post, because he's a good post player, when he get, hits in the post, he needs to be able to throw it out to more people. Moving into blocks, 0.4 blocks. Really see that going up. Like I said, he didn't have many minutes this season. He played in 33 games and started in 12 of them. So 
he was still him and Willie will become that duo that just keeps on blocking on blocking on blocking it's gonna be fun to watch moving into steals half a steal probably get a little bit better at that with being down in the post being able to strip bigger guys turnovers 1.1 turnovers that's okay if we can see like I said Kings we're really known for being bad at their turnover numbers. As long as those all go down for these players, we'll be fine. Free, um, uh, fouls aren't a big trouble with him. 1.5 fouls a game. Let's move on to his pros and cons. Pros. There's a lot of pros, and there's definitely somewhat cons to talk about as well. Great, sh great scoring close to the rim. Can go up, retrieve the O board, and put it back in whenever he needs to. Also, he can play the pick and roll game pretty well. Picking, getting a good lob to the basket, or just straight up turning around and dunking on people in the, in the post. Moving on to his great long range potential. He really does. We saw that he was shooting mid-range shots very smoothly. His jumper was very smooth for the minutes that he got. And he started to display that three-point shot, and it's very smooth. He displayed that at Kentucky, too, and in and when he played in high school, which was great to see. Moving on to his great rebounding, as we saw later in the year, he was getting up to some of those double-double games. Hopefully you see more out of those for him. Like I was about to say, great, a great pulling in the boards and collecting rebounds, which, who, why would you, that would be great for a power forward. And a little bit of a nick on his, or a notch on his name. Second highest scoring game by a rookie who came out of the 2016 NBA draft with 32 points against the, the Suns. And I'm only saying the second because the other player declared for the draft but went undrafted, and that was Yogi Ferrell. He had 34 for the Dallas Mavericks, which was crazy to see that an undrafted player could get that many. But there you go. Moving on to cons slash work in progress. Working on his uh, shooting consistency, growing more at the three-point shot, and making a better clip of his mid-range shots, which I would be very happy to see that happen. I, w I really do see him becoming a 15 to possibly 16 point score. Moving on to bulking up, and this was a big thing. During his rookie season, those 33 games, he had a really hard time with bigger, like not the sense of they're taller than him, but strength wise, he just didn't have the muscle to, to stay next to him. If he can add between 10 to 20 pounds, which it seems like he has been doing that within this off season, including summer league, he looked a lot, he was starting to get a lot bigger. He can not only be more aggressive in the paint, but he can also start to take more charges and have the strength to defend other bigger power forwards. And then his last but not least, his passing. Like I said, if he can get down in the post, which he's really good at, and find Buddy or Bogdan or somebody that's in the key, somebody that's in the top of the or on either one of the wings, if he can throw out to them, that would be great to see. Maybe him get to like three to four to five assists a game. That'd be great to see. And now we are going to be moving on to the lowest ceiling, the highest ceiling, and the middle ceiling. Make sure you guys choose which one of these three you think is most likely. And if otherwise, hit the otherwise buzz button. The link, the poll should appear now in the video. Make sure you guys go check that out. Hit it and then comment down below if you agree. Why do you agree? If you don't agree, tell me who you would think he would be most likely with. But lowest ceiling. I see him becoming a Serge Ibaka kind of player. Great three-point shooter, but not the best rebounder. This is like low, low though, because Scalabese has already shown that he's going to be a good rebounder. So unless his game didn't go any more than what it is now, when it comes to rebounding, Serge, Serge Ibaka would be that kind of rebounding set, but a great shooter. So there's that. Moving on to mid-ceiling, Kevin Love. Great rebounder, but can become inconsistent when it comes to shooting the mid-range and the and from three. It's very true. He was like that in Minnesota. He was like that. He's been kind of like that more in Cleveland than Minnesota because in Minnesota he was the number one scorer before he got traded. Where in Cleveland, he's not the number one scorer, so he still gets a lot of shots, but he's not con consistently making them as much as he did for Minnesota. But if that's what we get, a good 
15 point a game possibility and a great double double man which i'll take a kevin love any day moving on to his highest ceiling now this could be totally wrong but this is just what i see and i know that we've already seen players like Lori marketing or isaiah the um the i think he came from germany the the other seven footer that i think got drafted by the Houston Rockets, Isaiah Hardenstein, he looked like a good candidate to become the next Dirk Nowinski, but I really do think that this, or, you know, the unicorn, Kristaps Porzingis, also could be the next Dirk Nowinski. But in the, in the line of just a great rebounder, a great scorer, a very clutch three-point shot, I think if Scalabi Sierra became a lot bigger, a lot more muscle, could make sure that he was a double-double machine every single night, and he got good scoring, including a great three-point shot, he could become, and this is just year-wise. This isn't other years. I'm talking about Dirk Nowinski from 01 to 09. In those years, he was averaging double-doubles like no man's land. So I think that's where I would see him being. Obviously, Dirk Nowinski being one of the best power forwards in NBA history. Also, a great shooter and a great rebounder, like I said. So, just let me guys know what you guys have to say. Not only on the poll, but down below in the comments. I always like to hear you guys' comments on there. And let me know what you guys think about Scalabi Sierra. Do you think he's going to be an all-star? Do you think he's going to be a good role player? Do you think he's not going to be anything good? Do you think Harry Giles will be better? Let me know down there in the comments. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, follow me on all my social medias. All links will be down below. And I'll catch you guys later, good fans.